just a general familiarization with the pump panel in operation. When we look at the top, obviously we have master intake and master discharge. That master intake gauge is going to register incoming pressure or incoming vacuum in the situation where we're operating off of a draft or, or some type of a non-pressurized water source. When we when we are utilizing a pressurized water source in the in the situation of a relay or a hydrant uh, or something like that, you're going to see this this gauge is going to register in pressure. The discharge side of the gauge or the master pump discharge gauge <clears throat> will always register pressure. We use they utilize these same gauges just because it's con for purposes of convenience. Over to the right of it, you'll see the water level indicator for what's in the tank, as well as various other array or gauge cluster. And what you'll notice is typically with newer fire apparatus or apparatus that has been built within the last 15 to 20 years, you'll typically what will happen is you will have a uh, some type of a valve control, whether it be a push-pull linkage, a quarter turn linkage, a screw linkage, or some kind of a uh, electronic valve, electric valve, will generally be associated or located right next to the pressure valve or pressure gauge for that particular discharge line. So it's important for us to realize that when we operate with multiple lines, our master pump discharge gauge will always register the highest pressure that we are pumping and then it's up to us as the pump operator to go back through and gate down whatever our cross lay or whatever our our different valve need or configuration is. Continuing down the side of the pump, over here we have the LDH discharge, which in most cases will be located on the opposite side of the pump. Uh, there's an NFPA change several years back that required if you have an LDH discharge that it was located opposite the pump operator for, t for reasons of safety. That's good and bad. The, the one issue with that is that we can't always see it uh, as far as from an operating position here at the pump. We can register pressure on that line and we have control of that valve, but having that valve on one side and the actual discharge on the other obviously will generate some some connection issues if somebody else comes up and makes that connection for you and they put it on the wrong discharge and you open that valve it can present a problem um, or a potential discharge issue running down the side of the pump most of the time you'll have some type of a cab tilt control possibly as well as possibly a manual shift linkage for the pump in case the there there's a problem in the in, up in the cab with the air shift we can come we can shift that or override that manually here at the pump panel that's a very good um, little added safety factor to have in the in the fact that a lot of us are utilizing other mechanisms to make that shift air is very reliable and they have been very reliable for a long time but as you know it's it's mechanical and everything mechanical at some point tends to break down to some degree so having that secondary backup to be able to shift that pump from road into pump gear and then function on the fire ground in the in the likelihood that we have an event or that we have a a, a problem with that transfer valve or transfer switch in the cab is very important below that most of the time you'll find our individual discharge uh, line drains and it's important to exercise those. Those typically are, uh, tend to be uh, globe style drains where they are quarter turn st style drains and they just it's a typical ball valve that you're used to seeing on a nozzle or anything else and to get those open and ex exercise them because they're you know uh, sediment within the within the pump itself uh, every time we utilize we don't utilize them often enough to make it uh, to exercise those valves properly so it's important to to recognize those issues as well a lot of times these gauge panels or gauge clusters will be color coded with the NFPA color coding system so you'll notice here like on discharge number two we have outlet number two with a painted escutcheon plate behind it along with right above it it says number two on the valve handle and valve location and gives us an indicator for where that pressure or where we would read pressure being discharged from that orifice as we 
<clears throat> scan down the pump. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about the pump certification plate. Recognize that the pump housing, where it sits in the, on the vehicle or on the chassis, pretty much this is our midline. And we should think of this as midline. Our, our, our large intake or our LDH steamer cap, if you will, it will be our midline of the pump and everything below it, or most of the time everything below it, is going to be some type of an intake or where we bring water into the pump at. Everything above that is going to be some type of a discharge where we discharge water out the top of the pump housing through various orifices off, orifices off the top of that pump housing. So it's important to recognize what we look at and understand the differences. This particular truck has two different valve styles. We have straight arm linkage that probably, they all probably operate the valves in the same way, whether it's a quarter turn uh, or a half turn. Most of the valve situations that we run into in the fire service on structural apparatus tend to be quarter turn ball valves to allow for that linkage to, to travel the shortest distance. One of the things that you'll notice is these push-pull valves are, are sometimes very handy because they are indicating. As you walk back to the back of the vehicle, you can look at the, the side of the pump and know what you have as far as what's open. And one of the, th and, and the, the, the example I will use is the tank to pump and tank fill or tank recirculating line. Those are two valves which I like to have as a push-pull configuration or straight arm linkage because it's important for that pump operator at a glance from a distance, five, 10 feet, I can look at that valve and know that it's in the open position by, being, by having the rod extended. That tells me that I know that my tank to pump is open because I know it's down here on the lower right and my tank fill and research line is open as well because it's up and on the left um, and it's, it, the rod is pushed out, excuse me. Location is not necessarily important. Those, those two valves may be situated directly over top of each other, but the point here is that by looking at them from a distance, you can tell that they're open and that you have water going into the pump as well as water being circulated back into the tank.